If you're struggling handling massive point cloud, I'm talking billion point scale or massive 3D meshes with a lot of triangles, handling various file format, and you don't necessarily have the codec skill to automate everything, then I have a solution for you. I will show you in this very quick tutorial how to get started handling and visualizing very quickly this data set on your local machine. Let's go. So what do we need to make that work? So we have three prerequisites. The first one is the command line interface from Windows in that case, and we'll type some kind of prompts. Don't worry, I will give that to you just right away. The second thing that we'll need is Cloud Compare. Just go onto the Cloud Compare webpage, download the version that best suits you, and you will be ready. And the third thing is Pottery and the variant, which is the desktop one. And again here, do not worry, I will show you how to get it and how to install it just right after. With that, we are set up and we're good to go. Let's dive right in. All right, so it's time to get our hands onto a very nice point cloud like this one, which is very, very big. As you can see, I'm in the street, but you have also the full city in here. And maybe you know what kind of city that is, right? So. Before getting there, let me talk really briefly onto the file format. So as you can see here, I have various file format, E57, LAS, LAZ, PLY, TXT, and also an OBG. So all of these files are point cloud, and this is a mesh. So this will be handy for me to show you how you can also handle big meshes. So these are pretty small. This is just to give you um, something comparable before moving on to the massive data set that you have. So as you can see, if I order that by size, you see that the txt file is very big, right? And the LAS file is the second one with 47. Then we go down if 57 PLY on bar, LAZ is the most compressed and the other one is something else. So all of this point cloud are the same one, okay? So the ID in here is to do some kind of file conversion. So we have to take any of our format and push that into a LAS or LAZ for better compression if you want to store something uh, file format, okay? So to do that, you just pin off the commands, you just have cmd. So the first thing that you want to do is actually change the directory to where cloud compare is installed, okay? So in my case, this is where cloud compare is. So I just copy that, I paste it here, and you see the little cd for change directory. Once I'm in the folder, I will be able to execute some kind of instruction by first calling in the name of the software, so you don't need to put cloudcompare.exe, I'm on Windows, you just type cloudcompare, you open, all right, this file, the sample.ply, with a global shift auto. This is really to make sure that if you have large coordinate, you will shift it, which will be handier to process. And then in here, what I say is, I want to have it as an export format LAS, you could put LAZ, Okay, and save cloud will save your cloud. So all that I have to do is to take that and as you can see, this will process my sample.ply file that is right here, okay? So now I spin off my comments line, I press enter. So this is the case for point cloud. Now, if you want it to have something for meshes, you pretty much do the same thing. So let me go back here. As you can see, what I do is I open my Stanford Bunny, right? And I will sample my mesh with uh, one million points. This is what I did, and then I save the cloud. So this is the command line, right? So I take it and I take it for red. So again, it will open cloud compare and it processes my point cloud. We went from any format to the LAS file format. Again, it's optional, the LAS is better for compression. And we would go from this common file format to what is called a modified nested oak tree. And what is that? Well, the best way for me to show you is exactly here. So you see that it's a huge point cloud and whenever I turn, sometimes I see the point refreshing a bit. So the Octree structure is super, super nice whenever you want to deal with massive point cloud because it will allow you to load point progressively depending on your position and your point of view. To show you exactly how that is, if I press in the boxes, right, I will go really far away 
this is my octree structure. So this is this big cube and it's subdivided into uh, eight little cube every time. And depending on where you are, you will fill this cube or not and only keep the ones that um, needs to be kept depending on the point of view. So you will see, I will zoom in and you will see that it will progressively refine, right? And load smaller and smaller cube, which increase the resolution until a certain point. Yes, so this is what we are going to do. And if I were to lock the view in here, so I press in lock view, it stop loading everything and you will see that right at the front here, front here, it just does not load the point that are behind me and only the one in front. The little trick with this specific approach in uh, this software is that actually we use a variant of Octree called modified nested Octree where we store a point at every level so that um, it's not so bulky the loading whenever you go in you go from no point to a lot of points there is always a little point in it and depending on the level the size of the point is adapted as well right so this is the octree structure this is what we need to create to be able to handle like massive point cloud so how do we do that we will leverage pottery and a specific part that is called pottery converter that is included in what we are going to do right now so what you need to do is you go to Pottery um, GitHub repository, so github.com slash Pottery slash Pottery. This is Marcus Schutz, a bright, bright uh, researcher at TU Vienne um, that I think finishes PhD, who is the main creator of the Pottery uh, architecture. This spans out from a research work called Scanopy that was initially um, developed there. But he extended it for having that as a WebGL platform. And what is nice is now you have the ability to have some kind of release, as you can see on the right. I will click on the release. And this is the Pottery code if you want to go on the web. But in our case, we want to have something local. So there is a little tool called Electron, which allows you to build a desktop version of web apps. And this is what he did here. So if I click Pottery Desktop, you go into releases and you can take the latest one, right? You unpack it and basically after unpacking it, you arrive to a folder that looks like this. You have a readme, uh, you have source, libraries, the index, which is the main page, and also the Pottery Desktop.bat for Windows, which allows you to run that directly. Take it for a spin. So I open my pottery, make it full screen, and I go in my folder with all of my data sets. So what is super cool with these specific methods is that you can now take your new last file, whether like we'll start with a sample, I take it, I drag and drop it in pottery, and automatically we'll understand that you need to convert it to this specific uh, nested oak tree. So this is what it does with the point cloud indexing, right? And the target directory will be exactly at the same place where your dataset is by default and will create a folder with specific file. So whenever I do that, it starts the conversion and after conversion, it visualizes the point cloud. So this is a smaller example, right? But this is super cool to be able to very quickly take any point cloud for a spin going through these various strategies. So if you remember, we converted our file to a LAS file and we converted this LAS file with Pottery to this modified nested octree and it's loaded. So at this stage, it's really a matter of how big your point cloud is. You or I would advise to go through this strategy if your point cloud is above 250 million points. If it's below that, you can directly load it with Cloud Compare. So again, take Cloud Compare for a spin like this. And if I were to open the same exact same file in here, right, apply, you can see that I have my point cloud open as well. So the rendering is different, right? But sometimes it's a bit more crisp. The big downside to using that is that you cannot work directly or edit the file. So this is what I need to show you, all right? Imagine you have a large point cloud and you want to edit it. So the first pass is visualizing that, what are you going to play with? And now you want to play around with it in Cloud Compare. Usually it means looking a bit at how it's um, 
like profiling your data set. So you have some various tools on the right side, like measurements. You can take some kind of measurements like this, right, to have the coordinates. The thing that I want to show you is exporting data pretty easily. So in here, um, you have this little tool called profile, and basically it will allow us to export some kind of data with a little trick. So what I do first is I click on it, and let me define maybe two points, like one here and one here. So this show you the profile, right click to stop. Um, it shows inside any clip task you, you can make known or you can highlight to see exactly where you did your uh, little path. So what you can do after that is take the point and maybe change a bit the way you do the slice check out only this slide I can highlight inside. And this is what I would get. All right, so the next thing that I like to do is increase the width, for example, to what, 0.5 meta to have a bit better uh, view. And what you can do thereafter is, again, I will just highlight, you can show the 2D profile. And this is super nice, it create a profile, right? That is actually uh, synchronized with your point cloud. So. If I were to put my cursor, you can see on the point cloud that you have the cursor that moves with it. This is a super cool addition. And on the left side, you have all uh, the interrogation and the feature as well, which are held in the LAS file, right? So now the last stage is, what about selecting like this and exporting to cl uh, Cloud Compass? You just click on last three, and then you save your profile. Let, let it live like this in the, the same folder, for example. So I save it. And if I open my folder, open Cloud Compare, I drag and drop my profile in here. I press Apply, yes to all. Then you see that now I have my profile. So let me zoom in, which allows me to work with it in Cloud Compare. So this is super cool. And as you can see, this is perfectly aligned. So we don't have a shift by working with its coordinates. So with this strategy is super handy from the get go to really understand what we are dealing with when it comes to the input point cloud data or input mesh data. So the second thing that I wanted to show you is the mesh, of course. So as we saw in here, we had our OBJ mesh, where right? I will just load it in Cloud Compare as a first pass so that you can see it. Um, I don't have a material which is perfectly normal because it's black. This is my mesh. This is a Stanford bunny. It's not well aligned, but this is how it looks like. Now, what did we do? We transformed this OBJ into a point cloud so that we can visualize it at full resolution, more or less, depending on the sampling strategy that we had in, um, in Pottery. So this was the Stanford bunny. I will take the bigger one. So I take it, I go to my Pottery, and the point cloud is loaded, and as you can see, it is in here. So um, this was really sampled, right? What is cool is that you see that you have the ability to switch the point cloud on or off. You have the ability to switch between every element that you created. So let me double click on this point cloud. And here as well, you can switch um, attributes like from here to that, for example, which is another attribute that I computed. You have the ability to take some kind of measurements to ensure that everything is smooth. So if I were to take that to that seven meter, this is my pole. Um, and you have also the ability whenever you have classification to handle that right in here. So it's very cool for profiling visually the data before moving on to processing stages. And this is usually something I do all the time with any of the big point cloud that I have. So this one, for example, let me drag and drop it. You see, this is a massive point cloud gigabyte and you have it in less than a second visualized. And I will deactivate um, the two other one and this one, check that out and change that to intensity gradient, which allows us to move around. And the last thing that you can do is uh, change the way that you like move in the point cloud by clicking on this little bird, which allows us to move around in the point cloud. So of course, this is still streaming from my disk, which is not an SSD. So this is what will condition how quick 
the loading happens, right? But it's super, super interesting to monitor exactly what we are dealing with. Now, let me showcase an example. If I wanted to take this poll that I like, take the profiler, just create the profile that, that goes really from one side to the other, um, like this would be good. And then you increase the width to one meta, five meta, 10 meta, seven meta will be good enough. And you show the 2D profile, the loading happens. So here we have a lot of points. You see that you have classification flag and other stuff in here. Whenever this is done, all that we have to do is export to LAS, profile two, and this is exactly what I have. So from there, it's much easier, for example, to um, compute some kind of features if we want it. So edit uh, tools, others, compute geometric features. And from here, I will use a neighborhood radius of 20 centimeter to compute, for example, um, the number of neighbor every 20 centimeter, uh, the planarity, the verticality, and I press OK and it will compute that. And you see then you can use that afterwards to do some kind of classification or to handle that for more advanced processes. And that's it guys. So basically now you have a way without coding <laughs> much more than a simple common line to have this automatically alleviated for you. Visualizing massive point cloud and being able to edit a bit some parts, analyze a bit what you have under your hands. What is the next stage is to automate the process, right? So here you need a bit of code. So I would encourage you to look at the other tutorials that are created around Python. So see you in the next video. Bye bye.